Welcome to our Wednesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. I am now in the middle of my fourth week of teaching on humility being God's path to greater grace. I tell you, that is powerful, and I've shared some great, great things. This is a brand new teaching that I've never done on television. Of course, I've talked about different aspects of this, but it's the first time I've just tried to cover this subject, and it's brand new teaching, and I would really like to encourage you to please get it. What I'm saying is so different than what our culture says today that it just needs to be shouted from the housetops, and that's the reason I'm promoting it. It's not about getting the money for the product and stuff. You can go to our website and get this free of charge. If you want to write in, you can get this entire teaching free, one teaching at a time. We offer the CDs, uh, you know, free of charge. Our partners have enabled us to do that. We do put a suggested price on the whole product, on the whole album, uh, but even at that, you know, it's uh, a suggested price. You don't have to give the whole amount. I'm not after your money. I'm after trying to get the Word of God out. And I'm telling you, this is something that every single person needs. So, I've already covered a lot of material. Uh, I've talked about uh, probably 50 or more scriptures just where God hates pride. He resists the proud, but gives grace unto the humble. And we talked about a lot of those things. Then we tried to put uh, humility into a scriptural definition because I believe that religion has taught that a humble person is a weak person, a person that has low self-esteem and no confidence in all of these kind of things, and that is not true. Moses was the meekest man on the face of the earth, and man, he was super confident and bold and strong, and Jesus was a meek person. He said, I'm meek and lowly in heart, and yet he drove the money changers out of the temple. We have to redefine what true godly humility is. So the very first characteristic that I talked about was that true humility is being God-dependent, not trusting in yourself, not leaning to your own understanding, not doing your own thing and waiting until you crash and burn before you come and ask God for help, but it's just being totally dependent upon God. Spent a number of days talking about that. And then I've been talking about how that uh, true humility always gives the glory to God. You always promote God. You are not promoting yourself. And if you truly are humble to where you are only out to promote God, well, then that makes you immune to the rejection and criticism of people because it doesn't matter to you. You aren't out trying to win a popularity contest. And I use Jesus as an example of this in the sixth chapter of the book of John. I tell you, the things I've already covered are just tremendous. If you've missed any of this, please get it. Let me use a passage over here in Joshua chapter 7. This is where Joshua led the children of Israel uh, to conquer the city of uh, Jericho, but he told them not to take any of the spoils, that this very first victory, they weren't supposed to take any gold, silver, raiment, anything. They were, it was all dedicated to the Lord like a first fruits offering, and uh, he told them not to do it. Well, there was a man named Achan who violated that, and he found some... Uh, precious metals and some garments, and he took them and hid them in his tent. So when they went out to the next battle, they were beaten. I mean, they had won this huge battle against this fortress of, of uh, Jericho, and then they went against this little tiny city that only had a few people in it, and they were beaten by these few people. And, and uh, Joshua just couldn't understand how this happened, and the Lord told him it was because somebody had taken of the accursed thing. In other words, they had taken this gold, silver, and these raiments, and had, um, and had hid them. And because of that, that's the reason that they had lost this battle and that they had to deal with this before God would uh, give them the promised land the way that they had desired. So that's the background of it. And the Lord showed that Achan was the man who had done this. And here's what Joshua said to him in Joshua chapter 7, verse 19. And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give... I pray thee glory to the God of Israel and make confession unto him and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And so he went on and told him what he had done. But my point is, he, we're talking about giving all of the glory to God as being one of the characteristics of humility. And notice in the light of that, what Joshua said to him, he says, my son, give, I pray thee glory to the God of Israel and make confession unto him and tell me what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. So in other words, he's saying, tell me the truth. 
Give glory to God. Did you know that giving glory to God, when you are out to glorify God, you will tell God the truth. I've made some comments about this uh, before in this teaching, but all lies are based in pride. To where you are seeking the glory for yourself, you are not giving the glory to God. And that's exactly what Joshua said to Achan. Give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel and make confession. Tell the truth. When you are not telling the truth, it's because you are afraid that the truth is not going to advantage you as much as the lie would. And so you're going to misrepresent yourself, misrepresent the facts in order to get praise and glory and honor for yourself. So man, this would really help you if you would just acknowledge that when you lie, and again, there's people that say, well, it's not a total lie. It's just a little shading of the truth. The Bible says, thou shalt not bear false witness. It didn't use the word lying. We should not misrepresent facts. When you tell only the good things about yourself, when you overinflate what has happened, when a pastor says, oh, you know, there was a thousand people there and the truth was there was 200 there. I couldn't tell you how many churches I've been to that we've asked how many they run in church and they will say 500 or whatever and I go and there's 50. There's 100 max and it's just a lie. You know what? That's, that's seeking glory for yourself. You're thinking that somehow or another if you were to tell me how many people actually came, I might not go to that church or whatever. And it could be the same thing with your employer, the same thing with your mate that they might interpret, misinterpret something so you just lie and manipulate the facts. You know what? That is not glorifying God. That is seeking to glorify yourself. Boy, those are strong statements. All lying has its root in pride. The fact that you are out to glorify yourself and not glorify your uh, God. He said, now give the glory to God and tell me the truth. When you tell a person the truth, you are glorifying God. Now, we need to speak the truth in love is what the scripture says. I'm not saying that you use the truth like a club and if you know something bad about a person or if you say something that could hurt a person, you just do it in a mean way. We need to be as kind and loving as we possibly can, but we need to speak the truth and not lie. You know, I've told people before, you know, if a woman comes up and says, does this dress make me fat? They shouldn't ask me unless they want the truth. Now, I'm not going to go out of my way to offend them. And I, I have told people before, I said, you know what? You don't want my opinion. What does my opinion matter? If you like it, wear it. That's just great. I've tried to dodge it and stuff like that because I don't want to offend a person. But if a person just backs me into a corner and says, tell me the truth. Does, do you like this? Well, I'm going to tell them the truth. They shouldn't ask me to tell them the truth if they don't want to know. Hey, Amen. And I know that there's some people that think, well, you're just totally justified to sit there and tell your wife or somebody that they look great when the truth is they look bad. That's not true. Jamie just asked me about something two days ago about how does this look? And I didn't say anything, but just my lack of saying anything, I guess, said something. And anyway, she went and changed and didn't wear it. And I told her, I said, you know, you're just fine. You can wear whatever you want to. And she says, no, I can tell. And so, it, but anyway, I didn't go out of my way to hurt her, but I am not going to lie to a person either. You need to tell a person the truth. And if you aren't doing that, then you are seeking to glorify yourself instead of glorifying God. Look at this in Luke chapter 17, verse 18. This is where Jesus had 10 lepers come unto him and he told them to go show themselves to the priest. And as they went to the priest, on the way they were healed. And one of the lepers came back and fell down at Jesus' feet and began to give him thanks for what he had done. And here's what Jesus said in Luke 17, 18. He said, Are there not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger? And Jesus here said that by him coming back and saying thanks, that he was giving glory to God. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is to say that one of the characteristics of God kind of humility is to give glory to God. Did you know if you are truly glorifying God and not glorifying yourself, if you are truly humble and not proud, you will be a thankful person. You will be a person that just constantly thanks God. And again, you know, I, I know that some people will take the things I'm saying as 
I'm promoting myself. I'm not. And it's actually humility for me to use these things as an example. But I just know me better than I know anybody else. And, you know, over the last few days, man, I've been, I've been blessed to be at home for a while. We took some time off. And I have just been walking around my property. I mean, thanking God for the fact that He gave me that little piece of property that I can have on my own, thanking Him for the beautiful day, just thanking Him. I mean, I have been overwhelmed with thankfulness. If you are truly humble, you are going to recognize that everything you have and every good thing in your life comes from God and you are going to be thankful. A person who is not a thankful person is a proud person. It's a person who is taking the things of God for granted and not realizing how blessed they are to have it. This leper came back and fell down at his feet and Jesus said, weren't there 10 that were clean? And yet there's only one, one out of 10 came back to say thanks. You know, I know that God is a uh, altogether being. I don't know the right way to say that, but he's, he's not got personality flaws and stuff the way that we do. But I do believe that God loves us. God loves to hear us give him thanks. There's many scriptures that talks about enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise, and how we're supposed to be thankful unto him. We're commanded to rejoice in the Lord evermore. And again, I say rejoice. And on and on. There's just many things in scripture that shows us that God inhabits the praises of his people, that he loves us. He wants and desires this. I don't believe that if we don't say thanks to him and if we don't give him the worship, that is due unto his name. I don't believe that he gets bummed out over it and discouraged. He's all together and he can handle it. But I think it's terrible that God has done so much for us and that we spend such little time thanking him. Did you know one of the true attributes of humility is that you just give glory to God? And right here in Luke 17, giving thanks unto God is glorifying him. When you begin to thank God and acknowledge God as the source, did you know what? That glorifies Him. This last Sunday after I came home from church, nobody was up at our place in Woodland Park, and I just went into this building that we're building. It's a huge, hundred and nearly 150,000 square foot building, and it's still under construction. And I just spent hours walking around in there thanking God and praising God for what He's done. You know, we had to have a construction pause is what I called it because we ran out of money back in December. And uh, so I'm determined not to build this thing um, with debt. And so I just paused construction. And anyway, now we've started construction back up on a limited basis. And anyway, that's a separate subject. But my point is that as I walked around just thanking God for what I already saw, you know, over the last six years, we have put out $50 million above my normal expenses that it takes to run this ministry. It takes over a million dollars a month to pay our television bill, over a million dollars a month in uh, salaries and all of these other things. And so we have about a $3 million a month budget just to do the, the things that have to be done. And on top of that, I've come up with an extra $50 million over six years to build all of these buildings. And as I was walking around and just thanking God for what we already had, I can truthfully say that there is not a single doubt. There is not a single reservation. There is no discouragement. I am not discouraged in any way over the fact that it's not complete yet. I know it's all going to get done because He's been so faithful in the past. You know, faithful is he that called you who also will do it. I'm confident in this very thing that he that has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of the Lord Jesus and on and on. I mean, I, thanksgiving makes you abound in faith is what it says in Colossians chapter 2, verse 7. You abound in faith with thanksgiving. And once you start being thankful and you start giving glory to God, it puts all of the responsibility upon him. It makes him the source. And it takes you out of the crosshairs. The devil can come and try and say, what makes you think you're going to do that? Well, it's God that's caused all of this to happen. It wasn't me. I'm not taking the credit for the good things that have happened, and I'm not taking the blame for what hasn't happened yet. 
YOU KNOW WHAT? GOD IS THE SOURCE OF ALL OF THIS. AND WHEN YOU ARE THANKFUL AND GIVING GLORY TO GOD, IT JUST PUTS YOU IN A STRONG, STRONG, STRONG POSITION. AND YOUR FAITH JUST ABOUNDS WHEN YOU BEGIN TO GIVE THANKS UNTO GOD. AGAIN, I BELIEVE THAT THESE ARE THINGS THAT HUMILITY WORKS IN YOUR LIFE. IF YOU ARE A PERSON THAT IS NOT THANKFUL, IF YOU DON'T THANK PEOPLE, IF YOU'RE THE KIND THAT GOES IN AND YOU, YOU JUST SAY, WELL, THIS PERSON SHOULD TREAT ME THIS WAY, AND YOU DEMAND EVERYTHING. YOU'RE A VERY DEMANDING PERSON, AND YOU NEVER SAY THANKS. YOU NEVER SHOW YOUR APPRECIATION FOR ANYTHING. YOU'RE A VERY PROUD PERSON. NOW, YOU MAY NOT BE ARROGANT. YOU MAY NOT THINK YOU'RE BETTER THAN EVERYBODY ELSE, BUT YOU ARE SURE FOCUSED ON YOURSELF. YOU DO NOT SEE GOD AS YOUR SOURCE. YOU DON'T RECOGNIZE THE CONTRIBUTION THAT OTHER PEOPLE MAKE. YOU JUST THINK THAT, YOU KNOW, YOU ARE JUST THIS AWESOME PERSON. THAT'S, that's uh, PRIDE. YOU NEED TO HUMBLE YOURSELF. AND A HUMBLE PERSON IS A PERSON THAT IS GOING TO GIVE THANKS. THAT'S WHAT JESUS SAID, THAT WHEN HE RETURNED, HE GAVE GLORY TO GOD BY JUST SAYING THANK YOU FOR THE HEALING. YOU KNOW, I PRAYED WITH A WOMAN ONE TIME THAT WAS CRIPPLED WITH ARTHRITIS. THEY SAID THAT THEY weren't, DIDN'T EXPECT HER TO LIVE THROUGH THE WEEK. SHE HAD BEEN EIGHT YEARS WITHOUT EATING ANYTHING. IT WAS SOLID FOOD. He, SHE HAD TO EAT LIQUIDS. SHE WAS ALL curl, CURLED UP AND HER HANDS WERE GNARLED AND EVERYTHING. AND I PRAYED WITH HER. SHE WAS INSTANTLY HEALED. GOT UP OFF THIS STRETCHER, STARTED WALKING BACK AND FORTH. WITHIN A WEEK, HER HANDS WERE BACK STRAIGHT. I NEVER SAW THIS WOMAN AGAIN. SHE NEVER SAID THANKS. AND YOU KNOW WHAT? I DON'T DEMAND IT. IT DIDN'T DISCOURAGE ME OR DEFEAT ME, BUT I THINK THAT IT WOULD HAVE BEEN THE RIGHT THING ON HER PART TO AT LEAST SAY THANKS. SHE JUST GOT HEALED, RAN OUT THE DOOR, NEVER CAME BACK. AND IT'S ONE THING NOT TO THANK A PERSON WHO'S PRAYED FOR YOU, BUT I MEAN MANY PEOPLE DO THIS WITH THE LORD. THEY'LL BE IN A LIFE AND DEATH SITUATION. THEY PRAY, GOD DELIVERS THEM, AND THEN THEY JUST GO RIGHT BACK TO DOING WHAT THEY WERE DOING BEFORE. I WAS TALKING TO A PERSON NOT LONG AGO THAT MADE A COMMITMENT TO GOD THAT WHEN THEY WERE IN VIETNAM, IF GOD GOT THEM OUT OF THEIR ALIVE, THAT THEY WOULD SERVE HIM. AND I MEAN, GOD PERFORMED A MIRACLE, GOT THEM OUT ALIVE, AND WHEN THEY GOT BACK TO THE STATES, THEY JUST TOTALLY FORGOT, AND THEY DIDN'T THANK GOD. THEY DIDN'T FOLLOW THROUGH WITH THEIR COMMITMENT. YOU KNOW WHAT THAT IS? THAT'S PRIDE. THAT'S JUST A PERSON BEING SO CONSUMED, SO OCCUPIED WITH themselves, THEY DON'T THINK ABOUT GOD. YOU KNOW, THE SCRIPTURE TEACHES THAT WE CAN MINISTER TO THE LORD. IN THE EIGHTH CHAPTER OF THE BOOK OF MATTHEW, JESUS HEALED PETER'S MOTHER-IN-LAW, AND SHE GOT UP AND MINISTERED TO HIM. IT DIDN'T MEAN SHE PREACHED TO HIM, BUT SHE JUST WASHED HIS FEET, WHICH WAS THE CUSTOM OF THE DAY, PROBABLY TOOK HIS COAT, FIXED SOME FOOD, AND IT MINISTERED UNTO HIM. THE SCRIPTURE SAYS IN ACTS CHAPTER 13, VERSE 2, THAT uh, PAUL AND SILAS AND ALL OF THESE OTHER PEOPLE, THEY FASTED AND PRAYED AND MINISTERED TO THE LORD. AGAIN, THEY WEREN'T PREACHING TO HIM, BUT YOU KNOW WHAT? THEY WERE LOVING HIM. WHEN YOU BLESS THE LORD, WHEN YOU PRAISE HIM, WHEN YOU SAY THANKS, YOU ARE GLORIFYING GOD. YOU ARE MINISTERING TO THE LORD. IN THAT SENSE, GOD HAS A NEED. NOW, AGAIN, YOU HAVE TO UNDERSTAND THE WAY I'M SAYING THIS. GOD IS GOD. HE'S COMPLETE. GOD, YOU KNOW, WE COULD ALL BE GONE, AND GOD WOULD STILL BE WHOLE AND COMPLETE, AND HE'S NOT GOING TO FALL APART. GOD IS GOD, AND HE IS NOT DEPENDENT UPON US, BUT BECAUSE OF LOVE. HE LOVES US SO MUCH THAT HE DESIRES US TO WORSHIP HIM. ZEPHANIAH CHAPTER 317 TALKS ABOUT THAT HE REJOICES OVER US WITH JOY. AND THAT WORD REJOICE MEANS TO TWIRL AND DANCE VIOLENTLY. MAN, HE INHABITS THE PRAISES OF HIS PEOPLE. PSALMS CHAPTER 22, VERSE 3. THE LORD DESIRES FOR US JUST TO SAY THANK YOU TO HIM. AND WHEN WE DO THAT, THAT IS GIVING GLORY TO GOD. AND AGAIN, THIS IS A TRAIT OF HUMILITY. JESUS WOULD NOT TAKE GLORY FOR HIMSELF. EVERY TIME PEOPLE WOULD PRAISE HIM, HE WOULDN'T DENY WHAT GOD HAD DONE THROUGH HIM, RAISING THE DEAD, SEEING BLIND EYES OPEN, BUT HE WOULD PUT ALL OF THE GLORY TO GOD. HE WOULD MAKE GOD THE SOURCE. WHEN YOU ARE GLORIFYING GOD, WHEN YOU ARE THANKING HIM AND SAYING, GOD, THANK YOU FOR MY PROSPERITY. THANK YOU THAT THINGS ARE AS GOOD AS THEY ARE. AND WHEN YOU'RE DOING THAT, YOU'RE GLORIFYING GOD. THAT IS A TRAIT OF HUMILITY. IF YOU HAVE A LACK OF THANKFULNESS TOWARDS GOD AND TOWARDS PEOPLE THAT GOD USES IN YOUR LIFE, IT'S BECAUSE YOU ARE A PROUD PERSON. AND A LOT OF PEOPLE DON'T SEE THAT AS PRIDE, BUT IT IS. PRIDE IS TAKING ALL THE GLORY FOR YOURSELF. YOU'RE THINKING ABOUT YOURSELF. YOU'RE ALWAYS WORRIED ABOUT WHAT PEOPLE THINK ABOUT YOU, BUT YOU DON'T THINK ABOUT OTHER PEOPLE AND WHAT THEIR NEEDS ARE. 
You know what? When you start thanking people, if somebody does something for you, say thank you to them. Man, you could make their day. You could bless them. As Jesus said, it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. And yet a proud person, it's all about them receiving. It's all about them getting everything for themselves. It's all about them glorifying themselves. You need to glorify the Lord. So a lack of thanksgiving is an indication of pride in your life. And it means that you do not acknowledge, or at least to the degree you should, that God is your source. And there's a lot of people that the reason they don't give thanks to God is because they really think they have done all of this. When you go get your paycheck, you don't just say thank you, thank you, thank you to this person like, you know, they've given you something. You think, no, I earned this. But the truth is, God is the one who's caused you to be born at this time. God's the one that's given you the freedom that we have in this nation. God is the one who's given you your talents and abilities. And the truth is that we do need to acknowledge that without God, we wouldn't have the ability to get that paycheck. It doesn't matter how hard you work. Yes, you may have done some things, and I'm not saying that you deny that and deny that you have been a part and that you've been faithful and that you've done a good job. You don't have to deny that, but you just need to recognize God is your source and say, thank you, Father. You know, in my life, God has blessed us. There was a time when Jamie and I were so poor, we couldn't pay attention. I mean, we nearly starved to death. And just yesterday, I was eating. Jamie's involved in rehearsals for these uh, productions that we're putting on in uh, Woodland Park. And she's been gone a lot, and I've been home a lot by myself. And you know what? I've uh, had to feed myself. And I was just sit sitting there thinking the other day as I was eating a chicken pot pie that I heated up in the microwave. That's about the extent of my feeding myself. <laughs> and as I was doing that, I was just thinking about how blessed I am. That, man, here we are, and I could not, if I didn't want this, I could go someplace. I could buy me anything I want. I could, I could do anything I want. I am not limited. And I remembered the time that Jamie and I would go weeks at a time without food. And you know what? I've sought the Lord and I've done certain things, but it is not my great wisdom and talents and ability that has caused me to prosper. It's God. I've been clinging to God and it is the blessing of God. I've humbled myself under the mighty hand of God and God has lifted me up. And as I was eating my meal, the other day, I was just sitting there glorifying God and thanking God and praising God and recognizing God as my source. You know what? That's humility. I don't believe that when we eat, we have to give thanks over our food. I don't think you go to hell if you don't do it. I don't think you're a bad person if you don't do it. But you know what? I think it is a great habit to get into just every time you eat to thank God and remember that, man, Praise God, I've got food to eat. Thank you for this. Give thanks over it. I think it's a godly thing to do. It's humble. One of the traits of true God kind of humility is giving glory to God and being thankful for what He's done.